Hey everybody, welcome back. We are on elasticity, specifically we are on price elasticity of demand, and in this video we are looking at its determinants. Now I want you to understand something. Anytime you hear that word determinants in an economics class, perk up, okay guys? That is important stuff, okay? You hear determinants, you're like, that's what determines something? You're gonna be tested on it. You gotta know the determinants. We've already talked about some determinants. Determinants of demand, know those. Determinants of supply, know those. Now we're talking about determinants of price elasticity of demand, you need to know them. They're right here, but hey, don't read ahead. We'll be there in just a second. Look over here first, okay? Just wanna go through some basics, okay? PED, price elasticity of demand, what is the formula? Hopefully we're getting really good at this. It is the percent change in QD. Remember, QD, quantity demanded, is the dependent variable. It is dependent upon the price. Price changes, QD changes, all right? Percent change in QD over percent change in price. Now take a look at this. We've got a numerator and a denominator, okay? So we're looking at the relationship between this and this, and now we can talk about elasticity values. I've got this little number line. I'm going from zero to the right, so these are positive numbers. However, PED truly is a negative number because of the law of demand. Price goes up, QD goes down, price goes down, QD goes up. We have a negative relationship, so you get a negative number but because of the law of demand, but because it is a law of demand, since it's always gonna happen, economists say, hey, PED values, we're always going to put in absolute value terms. So always in absolute value terms. So we're always gonna be in the positive territory. Now take a look, I got zero, I got one, and truly I can head out all the way to infinity. What happens if the value is between zero and one? What's going on? Well, that would mean that, percent, that the percent change in QD was less than the percent change in price, right? That means that this is smaller than this. That's what gives us a zero to one measurement or a measurement that's less than one, okay? If that's the case, if this is smaller than this, okay, we're gonna say that we're relatively inelastic. The dependent variable, the percent change in the dependent variable is less than the percent change in the independent variable. We're saying the dependent variable is not that responsive. In fact, we're gonna say it's inelastic. So zero to one, inelastic. Now, let me make a little editorial point here, okay? Because I don't like how economists speak of these terms. It kind of messes me up when I'm in class. I have a difficult time talking about this stuff because we act as though there's just, it's a binary thing. Either it's inelastic or, and you probably guess what's gonna be on this side, it's gonna be elastic. You'll see it in just a second. And we speak in these binary ways, but that's not right. There's amazing amount of shades of gray right here, okay? Tons, infinite, okay? The closer we get to zero, hey, really inelastic, super inelastic. The closer we get to one, mildly inelastic, okay? We get really close to zero, this thing hardly changes at all when price changes. Hey, clo really close to zero, super inelastic. Inelastic means not responsive, okay? Keep that in mind, so it does matter. You might hear terms like mildly or super or greatly or whatever, okay? Just know lots, infinite number shades gray there. Next, okay? Over on this side, value greater than one. The percent change in QD was greater than the percent change in price. The percent change in the dependent variable was greater than the percent change in the independent value. Guess what? That means that's responsive. Responsive, elastic. But once again, we've got mildly elastic, okay? 1.01, all right? Mildly, that'd be super mildly, <laughs> super mildly elastic or we got more elastic, more elastic, more elastic, and we can go all the way, yes, we can even go to infinity, okay, which is infinitely responsive to changes in price. I know that's kind of crazy, but you are gonna see that eventually, okay? So, elastic, mildly, closer to one, more, 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 elastic as we go out that way. How about if the measurement came out to one, okay? That means the percent change in QD was the same as the percent change in price. If that is the case, the term economists use is unit elastic, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, that little number line. Remember, infinite number of shades of gray here, but we often do on test, they'll just say, is it inelastic or is it elastic or whatever, okay? So you gotta know that. Now, over to here. PED and its determinants. We're gonna try to run through this as quickly as we can, and we're gonna use our little number line over here. 
First, necessity versus luxury. If the good, the more a good is a necessity, the more it's going to be over here in the inelastic situation. Oh, oh, yes. No, no, I said that right. Oh my gosh, I thought I said it wrong. No, necessity, more in the inelastic, right? It's a need. We're not going to be very responsive. We're not going to be very responsive. Sounds like inelastic. The more it's a luxury, the more responsive we will be to price changes, the more we'll be in this territory over here. So once again, it's some, um, maybe it's some type of pharmaceutical drug that you have to take because you have some type of condition that you're trying to manage with that pharmaceutical drug. It is a necessity. I don't know, it could be insulin. The situation is we're over here, right? Luxury over here. Next, closeness slash availability of substitutes. This is going to be like, there's a lot to go through on this number two, okay? Closeness, okay? Is the, is the good really close? Is it a really close substitute? Put it this way. Is a Whopper truly a close substitute for a Big Mac, okay? That's up for you to determine, okay? But that's the idea. Is the Nike running shoe a close substitute for the New Balance running shoe? So closeness and availability. Do I have to drive across town? Do I have to order it online? Or is it across the street? How available are the close substitutes? So closeness and availability. The more close, the more available the substitutes, the more elastic, the more responsive the price. Why? Because they're close and they're available. I'm going to go buy the other one. You raise the price here. I'm going to go buy the other one. I'm going to respond. Elastic. Now, if they're not close, if they're not available, well, you raise the price. I probably have to buy the good anyway. I'm buying it anyway. I'm not responding to price in elastic. Okay. Definition of market size. This really just gets wrapped up into here, but some professors do talk about this one, so I want to throw it in here. So definition of market size, it's basically closeness and availability of substitutes. Here's how it works. We can define markets really narrowly. Toyota Corolla, or super broadly, automobile, okay? Toyota Corolla, really narrowly defined market. Well, guess what? We have close and available uh, substitutes for the Toyota Corolla. So they raise the price. What's the situation? We're going to be elastic. So narrowly defined market, elastic. We'll respond to price changes. How about if we just say all automobiles though? Oh my gosh, that's an incredibly broad market. In that particular situation, there's not close and available substitute for all for automobiles if we define it that broadly. So in that particular situation, we would be inelastic. So as the definition of the market grows, gets broader, 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 we're getting more inelastic because the amount, the amount of closeness and available substitutes is going down. Brand loyalty, okay? I like to think of, you know, we got PC, we're either a PC or an Android or an Apple world, right? Well, let's just talk about Apple, right? Apple, what are they gonna say? Hey, they're gonna try to get that brand loyalty. Why? Because if they get you to be brand loyal to Apple, you start to think there's not close substitutes. Apple is really something altogether distance, uh, uh, different, right? There's not close substitutes. There's not available substitutes, okay? So brand loyalty goes up, we get more inelastic, and let me tell you, that's what Apple wants. Apple wants us inelastic to their price changes, as any company does, all right? Next, percent of income or budget the good is. Now, this one gets kids a lot of times, okay? You got to hang with me, okay? If it's a small percent of your budget, you're actually going to be inelastic. I'm just jumping to it. I'm going to give you an example in a second. If it's a big percent of your budget, you're going to be actually elastic, and a lot of people think it's the opposite, but let's walk through this, okay? You go into a store and you're like, man, I want some bubble gum. And hey, there's this like fish bowl full of bubble gum and they're selling it for, I don't know, two cents a uh, piece of bubble gum. And you're looking at it, you're like, mm, I'm gonna go buy it. And you're about to go over there to buy it, but the manager walks up, not, not out of spite of you, okay? They're not even looking, the manager's not even looking at you. The manager just walks up, pulls out the two cent sign and puts in a four cent side, okay? This is not a spite thing, so get that out of here. It's just a price change, okay? Went from two cents to four cents. Are you still going to buy it? You said, ah, you got two cents, you're gonna buy it. You're like, mm, what are you gonna, yes, okay, yeah you're going to buy it, guys. It went from two cents to four cents. Guys, that's not gonna break you guys. That's a small percent of your budget. If you wanted a piece of gum, you're gonna still buy it at four cents, even though that's a 100% price change. Next, you're on a car lot. Okay, well actually, before I even go to the car lot, to go to that example, let's just make sure we've got this, right? Small percent of budget. Were you responsive to price? No, you were not. Inelastic. Now, you're on a car lot. You're thinking about buying a Toyota 4Runner. I don't know, I'm staying with Toyotas right now. Toyota 4Runner, right? You see it across the lot. On the windshield, it's written $40,000. You're like, mm, yeah, I'm gonna buy it. Okay, I'm gonna do it. You start walking that way, but on your way, all right? The manager of the lot walks over, not looking at you, not out of spite. They were gonna do it anyhow. They already have Windex in their hand. They go up there, they spray the, the windshield, they wipe it off, and they put $80,000. 
You're not buying anymore. No, you're not. You're turning around. You're not. 40,000 to 80,000. What was the price change? It was 100%. Actually, the percent change of price was the same in both examples. But are you going to buy it? No, because that's a much bigger percent of your budget. Therefore, you're going to be elastic. Bigger percent of your budget, more elastic. Watch that one again, maybe, because that one trips a lot of kids up on exams. Next, your time horizon. The greater your time horizon, the more responsive you'll be. If price of gasoline goes up tomorrow, if we don't talk about your demand tomorrow, what's gonna happen? You're still gonna buy close to the same amount of gasoline. However, over the course of a year or two years, you will become far more responsive. You will move closer to work. You'll buy a more uh, gasoline efficient car. You'll start um, finding ways to do mass transit. Whatever the situation is, you will change your lifestyle so you don't need as much gas over a long period of time. So time horizon, really short, you're inelastic. Time horizon gets super long, you are going to be more elastic, okay? Finally, purchaser versus payer. I just love to throw this one in. It's not found in a lot of textbooks, but I still like it and it's kind of important. And here's the situation, parent, you, okay? Or maybe you are the parent, but if you're the parent, you understand this, okay? Parent, child, all right? Parent, student, okay? Who is the actual purchaser? Well, you're like, I, I am. I'm the one that's gonna go actually buy that thing, that $20 whatever, video game, whatever it is, okay? But the payer is somebody else, okay? There's the purchaser, the one that actually physically gives the money to somebody to get the good, but the true payer of it, okay, the one that's actually, it's, it, it was, it's, it's coming out of their uh, wallet, they're somebody else. If that's the case, that the payer and the purchaser are not the same person, okay, guess what? We are inelastic to price changes. We're like, it's not our money. We're gonna buy it anyhow. But as soon as purchaser and payer become one, they're the same thing. As soon as they become one and the same, now, all of a sudden, we become really responsive to price, right? We graduate from college, we're on our own, no more money's coming from the parents. Purchaser and payer become one and the same. Guess what? I am now far more elastic, far more sensitive to price. This also goes for if you go on a business trip, right? Where you go out to eat. If it's your dollar, okay, guess what? You're probably gonna go to Subway or some way, somewhere somewhat cheap. But if your business is actually paying for your meal, guess what? We're going Ruth Chris, right? We're going big time. That's how that one worked. Okay, so that was it. That's the determinants. I threw in this little extra one, went through some extra ones there, but hopefully they all made sense to you. That's PED. We'll see you in the next video.